This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, regular viewers will uh, probably remember that uh, recently I had one of those um, rather nice Epiphone 59 Les Pauls in here for review. Um, lovely guitar, it's, it's the sort of top end of the Epiphone tree, uh, very much a, a collaboration between Epiphone and the Gibson Custom Shop. Beautiful guitar, and I was in two minds whether I was going to keep uh, that guitar or my Gibson Les Paul, my Les Paul tribute. Uh, but in the end, um, the, the, the Les Paul, the, the Gibson, I've sort of got an emotional bond with that guitar. Uh, so it was the Epiphone that went. It's now uh, in the hands of its new owner. It's left the building. But before it did, I thought it'd be fun to use it on one of these solo analysis videos. So here it is. <laughs> That was, of course, Eric Clapton's solo from uh, Cream's Strange Brew. And uh, given, you know, Eric and that sort of early 60s part of his career was uh, well known for using an old Les Paul, it just seemed like um, an appropriate, although he wasn't using it in Cream, was he? But, um, you know, that was more of a blues break thing. But it just seemed, you know, kind of a, a nice little dovetail to use that guitar uh, for this solo analysis. So uh, you've heard the solo. Let's have a little bit of a look at what's going on in the solo. Solo explanation okay as always let's begin by looking at what the solo is played over it's essentially a 12 bar blues in the key of a although we do have uh two bars at the beginning which is sort of the end of the previous 12 bar verse if you see what i mean where the, he, pl he plays a little fill at the end of that verse which I've incorporated into the main body of the solo here. Um, so we're, we're basically a 12-bar blues in the key of A, uh, meaning we've got the chords of A7, D7, and E7. And the sort of funky little riff that we play for each of those chords, it's pretty simple. It's just... Um, I'll demonstrate it for the A7 chord. We, we hit uh, the open A string, and then an A7 chord, and then this little kind of riff here, like that. So you put all that together and you get... etc. And then you just transpose that around the 12-bar sequence, so the D7 chord comes in. And then the E7 chord... Like that, so you put all that together into your standard kind of twelve bar blues format, and you've got the the backing that we're playing over here. Um, in terms of the licks, we are using apart from one note, which occurs in a few places in different guises. We're using the A minor pentatonic, um, a little bit of it in position one of the A minor pentatonic. <laughs> Um, some of it in position three. Notice I'm doing the Clapton fingering by kind of completely ignoring my little finger for this. Um, and uh, position four. So, where do we begin then? Well, we begin with that lick that I mentioned, which happens at the over the last two bars of the previous verse. And that's just pure position one, uh, A minor pentatonic. It goes like this. Now that there is a typical little Claptonism. He'll kind of um, sometimes take this minor third here and either bend it uh, to the major third or hammer onto the major third, but basically coming from the third of the chord onto the root and then going down to the fifth. So you get like that. That's a very Clapton-y sort of thing to do. Like that. So that look again. 
And then we're up to position four of the A minor pentatonic uh, for this lick here. We do actually step outside that this position for one note. Uh, so we've got that A and C note. And then we bend the E note at the 17th fret up three semitones. So you get like that. Um, then back down into position four, just looking at the tap here. There's um, the, I mentioned there's, uh, it's A minor pentatonic plus one other note. The other note is the major third of the A7 chord, the C sharp. And uh, in one instance that we'll come to shortly, we actually explicitly go to that note at the sixth fret there. But most of the time we're hitting that note by simply bending the C note, the minor third um, of the A, up to uh, the major third, like that. Typical little blues kind of minor to major third bend. Uh, so we've got, uh, what have we got? And then, again, just kind of coming out of this uh, top end of position uh, f uh, four of A minor pentatonic, and um, we've got this D to E bend here, and as I say, that minor to major third bend there. Then we come down, I forgot to mention this earlier, into a little bit of uh, position two. But we don't stay there long, so. Again, you know, very, very kind of clapped any thing to do. And it's at this point, after that lick, that we uh, do that uh, minor to major third hammer on that I mentioned. He's actually outlining the A7 chord here by major third root and then the flat seventh of the A7. Then we're back into uh, this sort of territory up here, position three of the A minor pentatonic where we've got this, this lick. Like that, again, those minor to major third bends there. And then kind of bouncing off the uh, the D note here. And then to conclude the solo, we're back down into position one of the A minor pentatonic again for this lick. Like that. Again, we've got that minor to major third bend going on there, resolving onto the root and then going down to the fifth like that. And that's what's going on in the solo. The main thing, really, that uh, you can take from this uh, isn't necessarily about note choice or anything like that, because if you've ever played any blues solo using uh, a pentatonic basis for it, then all of this will uh, hopefully seem rather familiar. The main thing is that the, I guess, the most difficult technique for most guitar players in this solo will be playing this. What, I hear you ask. Well, playing nothing for a few seconds. I'm looking at the tab now, and uh, after that um, that initial bend there, where we're bending that minor third bend, there is um, essentially over a bar, just looking at that, of silence, where he does nothing. That, that urge to fill up all of the space available to kind of fill every corner of the canvas with paint is uh, is a very strong one and the restraint that he shows here and that's not the only place there we've got um in the next bar after the uh after this lick again we've got um one two three and a half beats worth of just nothing there before he hits the next note so you know leaving those spaces leaving those punctuations um, are what make these relatively simple licks work for you you know um, it's it's you know if you kind of play less notes than the notes that you do play uh, somehow seem to mean more and, and matter more and uh, this solo is a, a, a great example of that and you notice when he gets to the kind of climactic part of the solo where we're going That part there, it's not particularly busy or fast in any by any measure, 
but because it's kind of busier than what's gone on before it 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 kind of does give the impression that the solo is reaching some sort of uh, climactic point. Um, so play less, and uh, that means that when you play a little bit more, it sounds like a lot more. That's the lesson from this solo, really. Uh, so now you know what's going on, go away and have some fun with it. And as always, you'll find a full tab for the solo in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing it and a jam track for you to play along with yourself and that explanation you've just seen there. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address and the link is in the description. $3 or £2.50 a month gets you access to all of these additional resources and goodies that go along with these YouTube videos. A massive, massive thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways, all of which are linked down below. But that's pretty much it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like while you're at it don't forget as always the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars what a great way to kick off the weekend i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane Bye for now. Mm -hmm.